Although you might see Fenebeth on the screen. It's not a video about her. I wanted to do this video uh, once I started looking through the R units because I was looking to upgrade units based on, uh, where is it? I can show you guys. Uh, well, he'll be a terrible example. I, I don't want to click her. So you see how some of my characters are already uh, blue. So that means that they're level 80. And uh, some of them I couldn't do. So I was like, maybe I'll just level up things for the trials, right? So I was looking at, you know, some of these R units because I was like, oh, I, I don't, I don't I can't do some of these SR units, so let me look at the R's, and I was looking at some of the R's, and they're actually not that bad. I think Rai gets, like, the biggest rep out of them. We all know that Saya, Victoria, Nina, I think Saya is actually a SR unit, so I think maybe I, I keep messing that up, but maybe she is R unit. I don't remember what she starts off as, but yeah. So these units are actually not that bad. I just feel like they get a bad rep because they're just the lowest rarity, but in this game, units just built right or used in the right conjunction can do a lot of work. So let me try to sell you on a dream that maybe if you don't know what the heck you're doing, maybe you're losing and like, I don't want to invest into these crappy characters, but they actually might bring you to the next level. So without further ado, let's get a rinky dinky do. Let's get into it. What's going on guys, it's your boy Cash. And today's video is going to be 100% MFO and the reason why I want to say that is because people might have a different outlook on certain things So got to get that clear and out of the way So first we're gonna go off with these two characters because they're the ones that are there first But also I think that they have a really cool potential. So let's go into Rai now Rai is really cool. She gains I hate that they talk they talk for eight years But Rai is pretty cool because if you look at the silver dragon she gains a uh, immunity to one fatal damage and that's gonna be because of her kamikaze attack and damage dealt to guardian classes are increased because you know she wants to be able to kill it a lot of sorcerers have things like that that have some way to kill guardians right so then you're gonna go here for a lost pulse and this thing does dumb damage of whatever uh deals this amount of damage but it has a 60 percent chance to trigger frenzy and it will deal an additional crazy amount of damage and stun the targets for one round so if that does trigger your hp will reduce to one that's where the passive comes in when she has immunity to fatal damage per battle it's also good to note is that again with reviving she does come back and she can take that one additional hit which i really really like you guys already know like i have this i really want to have this crazy revive meta thing going on uh, i really want it so bad and then this one is as nice as she does restore her hp when she does do her special attack which is good to kind of like hopefully mitigate but what i've seen she pretty much dies when you're coming in here to use a uh, good old rye you're coming in for the captain and that's pretty much all you're using it for. It does a crap ton of damage. And remember, she is a sorcerer, so you can boost her up with Chio and any of the hand boosting stuff, and then drop her down and then just bow. Do a really, really big hit. This does absolutely nothing, it's just a basic thing. So then you're gonna go into the lens and just keep in mind that it restore additional HP when she does it. Also here, you can get it that she does even more damage uh, to the, the people, you know, that's whatever, but it, it's really good. And for our unit to do as much damage as you probably have seen her do, she can do a decent amount of damage and not that bad to invest in, especially because if you need sorcerers, and I feel like it's another good thing to come down. You could just drop down this big flood of attacks. Just, just keep in mind though, that this skill only hits three enemies. So hitting three enemies, I usually like to make sure that there's exactly three enemies out there before I use it. If you use it when there's a bunch of enemies on there, then you know the effectiveness goes down you might not hit the leader you might not hit the target that you're looking to kill so that's cool and all but next we got mia now mia i love me some mia man reason why is just because of her passive is really cool so when mia dies again you guys gotta know that means it dies if i revive her it's gonna happen again and again and again and again and again and again so when she dies she actually transfers her attack and her hp to the leader and her damage rate in the battle increases by 15 percent um so if you were to keep doing that, you would actually, I, I'm gonna test this out. She's gonna be, uh, again, another part of my revive squad. I'm gonna have a revive squad whenever I can fully assemble it and just have her constantly keep coming back. I wanna see how strong I can make my leader, possibly with the Nightmare Hunter or something like that. Should be pretty ridiculous. Also, when she actually is fighting, she does have a, a single target damage reduction, which is really good if you can get that on the leader and then also do a, a little bit more damage. Also pretty good to get this on a tank if you need to kill the tank, because some of the tanks are very pesky in this game. But you know, you can set her out there, weaken the leader for two rounds, and then pedal the pedal, 
punk the leader, the enemy leader, and it's like whittled them down pretty strongly. I really, really like uh, this character. And then uh, her special is just the attack increases her defense penetration. Again, just trying to really, she's really like a cool YOLO kind of character. But when she does die, she boosts up your leader. And remember, it doesn't tell you that this this is for the battle. So you know, your leader is something that if he dies, it's not like a partner. So if your leader dies, you lose. So this is like a permanent buff. And I haven't seen anything that really strips buffs or anything like stats or anything like that from the leader. So as long as that's in effect, I can see you just playing this over and over and over again. Like what, they, what you see in the story mode. So really, really cool about that. Her lenses. Uh, I think it's just more damage mostly. See, like, increase her damage rate when she joins the battle. Increases the damage, uh, defense penetration when attacking using that skill. So, just more damage on damage and damage. So, I feel like that's where the R's usually uh, suffer as far as, like, getting really cool things. I think that that's kind of the only thing that they suffer with. Then we're going to go over to Victoria. Victoria. Gains a shield when she appears. Again, reviving. You can come and keep giving her a shield if... Uh, Saya and Nina are on the team, she's gonna get even more shielding, which is very pesky, but she only gets to taunt when she actually uses a skill, and this has a really high damage ratio, 400%, it's because she's obviously a tank, she's not gonna do crazy damage, but it's a nice multiplier to make up for the fact that she's not gonna have high attack. Then you come down here, and then this one is just a special where she just does more damage, <laughs> that's it, and same thing is just damage. Pretty lackluster, but as you can see here, she's gonna gain even more damage on that Thunder Blast, that, that her skill, and then increase her block rate, which is really good, so she can actually block, which is gonna mitigate more damage while she's taunting, being an asshole, and all that good stuff. And then you can increase some more, get some more block rate when you do her other EX thing. The Undying Bash is this move, and then this is the Thunder Blast. So like, I mean, what else do you want from a tank? She taunts the enemy, so all the single target nonsense is gonna go to her. Obviously, there's not much they can do to AoE. That's why Guardians, I feel like, that's why you see Sorcerers versus Guardians, kinda. Doesn't she turn SSR? Can you turn her SSR? I think so, because she has six stars here, just like uh, Nina, who we're about to get into, can also get uh, six stars, just like the, all the SSRs. I think they, they level up as you get their things. I think I screwed up and, and sacrificed some of the shards, so I might be screwed for the rest of my life. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, what's really cool about Nina, the longer she stays in the fight, the better she's going to get. As you can see, every time Nina damages an enemy, her damage rate goes up. So, she also has that, and then she has this as well. For each target hit, when she does the column attack, she gets increased crit rate, which is awesome. So, if she stays in a fight, her damage rate is going to go up, and her crit rate is going to go up, as long as she keeps doing her move. This is also pretty good with the character we just removed, removed, we just reviewed Edward, maybe funneling more spirit into her there's not that many characters that can do that like that can give outrage to other characters so you know funneling this you can maybe get her to do a skill twice which would give her a crazy amount of crit rate and she already seems to have decent crit rate and then you have this skill which is just single target attack and then this is a single target attack then you go down here to the lens and then you can see that crit power which is if she crits she's going to do more damage which is obviously amazing why would you not want that more damage more damage well more damage more hp more damage basic attack damage Crit rate, more more crit rate <laughs> by two rounds when she does this skill and then increases the chance. So increase by 50%. So if Heavenly Pierce triggers, which is this, if this triggers, her crit rate goes up 50%, plus this already triggered, right? So 17% per each character hit. So if there's a whole line, 17, 34, math, 50, what is that? Oh my God, math. 17, 34, 51 right so 51 if you go through i never multiply by 17 okay give me 15 i would have slammed it slam dunked it okay uh but that's gonna be 51 and then if, if you have that thing and she, that triggers even once she's at 100 percent crit rate and i don't think that there's anything that reduces crit in this game so if you're at 100 percent, i think you just kind of cruise so and again just keep her alive at that point as long as she's alive you guys already know so and i think this also like it says damage an en enemy so if she damages three enemies that's three times or increase the damage rate bringing it up to 27 percent so really good and these are the characters that they gave you in the game you didn't need to go out and summon a bunch of nonsense so don't pretend like you needed to <laughs> Now, I know you're tired of seeing this guy, but he's actually not that bad. He's a really good character. Uh, I'm, I mean, that's the whole point of the review, right? Like, what's cool about him is that he is a tank. He's going to take up some damage, but he does additional damage to a attack class unit. So these these freaking new characters that are out there that do crazy single target damage. But what I do like about him is that he has this attack, his unique that he comes out with. He specifically attacks attack-based characters. So no matter where there are, a lot of the times... Uh, really good players and sometimes the AI will stick 
attack case characters and a lot of them just do crazy amount of single attack ta what did i just say a lot of them do crazy amount of single target damage uh, most attackers aren't aoe so they'll just start plucking people down and like there's not much you could do they're sitting behind either tanks or they're sitting behind summons and you can't get to them it's really nice to have certain characters that will actually go and seek them and since he does increase damage to them he actually sometimes i, I used to i didn't know he was a tank when i first saw him I was like, yo he's melting my sire he is melting my uh maki like why is he doing so much damage to them it's because he's a tank that has a bonus towards them so really cool if you're having a trouble having a trouble if you're having trouble with um attack based comps and something like that bring him in you know because he's gonna take less damage and he's gonna snipe them out pretty much that's pretty much what he's for also here even his hawk strike his special he will look for attack based characters so he's stalking and hawking them you could almost think of him like not that i would put him in the back and like have him just snipe out those targets but it is nice to see that he'll do that let's go look for the lens uh do even more damage to uh, attack based characters and then we have a uh, hawk strike which damage rate of the target by reduces the damage rate of the target which is really good so let's say if he doesn't actually kill it especially let's say if the boss is the the attack based character then you can reduce their damage which is really really good too sometimes i have issues with uh, when maki is the boss and she just going off this would be a really good counter to that again these are units that you probably have a billion of them you probably have the lens upgrade like how i can lens upgrade this guy right now and also you can see how cheap it is it's not gonna throw away all your lost mirrors and these characters are good especially if you haven't gotten the crazy summon luck to get the characters that you probably really want so it is what it is now I'm going into un what is it uncharted territories. I don't know anything about Laura. Uh, I I call her Laura. It's Laura. Why do I I I assume names in this game? If you guys don't know, I definitely assume names, and it's really bad. I shouldn't do it. <laughs> All right. So Laura, uh, when she appears, she grants herself a shield, which I do see, and her block rate is increased. So make she's just pesky again. She's to me, in my personal opinion more about taking out you know like single target attackers just to be pesky in the front strikes the enemy with the crystal shield attacks and increases their block rate even further increases their block rate even further Whip. <laughs> after after poking her enough she'll double her efforts i guess that's it right <laughs> increases her block rate when she joins the battle but she her block rate okay she's gonna have a lot of block rate uh, I think that this seems more of a character for the Illusion Corridor because there is a thing where you block, you can heal. You can probably just have her just sitting there forever and ever and ever. She doesn't gain the shield back though. Uh, nothing gives her her shield back. Once she loses the shield, it's pretty much gone. But she seems like a really good Illusion Corridor character because her block rate would be up. And like I said, there's a buff that if you block, you heal. So you can possibly have her there for like 18 years. And as far as like for PvP or something like that, don't really see it. But being able to sit there is a really strong thing. And again, when she appears, so you guys already know that you could literally just keep making her pop up with the shield over and over and over again. And maybe be really pesky. Not dying to AoE sometimes is pretty good because sometimes you just need that character to survive while the other attackers are going to try to follow up because that's the whole thing, right? You have the AoE characters come out, try to nuke everything down, and then you summon a single target attacker. To try to finish it off now if the aoe doesn't kill because she has a crazy hp shield and a crazy block rate then she'll stand there also her energy cost is low so like i said if you guys don't know there are certain things i think like yuffie if i go look at yuffie i think it's yuffie let me just check See, look ally partners of the sorcerer cast deal 20 percent additional damage to the enemy uh 14 or greater so like but like there are characters that have stuff like that so you like having a low cost tank is really good because they mitigate that like how victoria would actually be in that uh, so would but uh, Ben 10, but <laughs> Bon 10. It's been, I, I assumed his name again. Uh, but Laurel actually, though she's very tanky, would actually slip under that thing, which I really do like that. All right, so next up is going to be Shanty. All right, so when Shanty appears, she's invincible for 15 seconds. That alone is stupid. Completely counters, as you all know, it completely counters any single target attacker just they can't do anything uh that's why i think it's even called melee magic uh you just can't do anything you have to sit there and you have to hold that shit and again when she appears so yes when she comes back she just like hey what's up so <laughs> everything else about her is basic basic like she gets nothing on here everything is pretty much her passive nothing here and then nothing here everything is she's pretty much at one passive that's why sometimes i said like oh i, I might just throw her on my team just so that when she's out there, I can just put her out there. She'll just stall for me. And, you know, I, I, that's it. I don't think she's any more complex. So you can see more damage rate resistance. 
but you know once that invincibility goes off she's screwed she better hope to get this off increase her defense and as, with this damage resistance hopefully that goes away but as we were just reviewing edward maybe she is countered by him because maybe she'll just steal the invincibility i think invincibility i'm pretty sure is a buff her damage resistance would be a buff to him and uh the, this increased defense would be a buff you could have edward tanky as hell so she's not popular enough for that to happen but phoby actually is and if anyone was to get phoby invincibility could be stolen so oh look i can upgrade the lens all right next up penny but now when penny appears very this is some weird stuff i actually really like this when penny appears the attack of two ally partners in the hand with the highest energy which could be your uh sorcerers so this and chio combined would could be Pretty ridiculous again appears so you know i'm not gonna keep saying it she is going to increase their attack by 22 percent and increase their crit rate by 22 percent and then also she's gonna give herself a damage rate boost like that is pretty spicy and again for our unit to do that in compare it could buff up your sr and ssr units when they're about to come onto the field so there are some of these like She's an attacker, right? But she's, that's such a supportish thing to do. You know, like, and she also will do decent damage because we're gonna go here. You can see she has a 425 single attack, so that's gonna do some pretty good damage, plus with her damage rate up. And you also see, again, she, you know, basic thing there. So you go to the lens, right? And you, I think that that thing increases. Yeah, she gets even more damage rate when she comes into the battle and then increases. And look at this, look at what happens if her, her special goes up. She'll further increase the attack of the highest energy in the hand. Dude, you can have something on absolute bath salt crack. Uh, like, think of uh, Rutania is in the in the hand, and Penny, you summon her, right? And then she does her, her special, and then now this thing, you're, what is it? That's like a 30% attack boost, and then you just drop her, and there's, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a dream situation, right? Maybe you drop Chio also, and then you just have this super buffed up 30% attack boosted plus freaking crit rate and you might wipe out the field same thing if it's a evil imagine if you have a single target attacker that's just going to go straight to the to the leader my god crazy stuff like i feel like that's why like if you guys are struggling on stuff maybe it's because you need to add a little bit more spice maybe add some spice to what's going on in your in your your selection right next up is going to meet maddie all right so when mary appears again check this out damage rate of all ally partners in the hand increases by 15 percent and she gives herself crit so it's these really weird like like these weird things about boosting the hands and the crazy part of how cheap they are they're so cheap so i'm, I'm gonna keep that in mind like when i'm doing like illusion corridor like to just like try out some of these combos to like have these crazy boosted cards in the hand and then just drop the uh, exodia on them i know the illusion corridor is not that hard but it's just like it's it's crazy to see like i feel like some of the stuff in illusion corridor i wish was in the regular thing like like panic into this and then you can give a bunch of psych and then you have all these things weird things triggering i really wish that that was kind of in the game now she has the burn baby burn i feel like one of the only characters like there's not that many characters that actually have damage over times but she does leave damage over times and then she has this and then I think in the lens, she has a skill where, you know, she does more damage if they're burning. So it's like a little combo she has within herself. She can also give herself increased crit rate when you lens her up. But I just like the passive. The passive alone, I think, is pretty good. And then obviously the column attack will allow her to, you know, get behind pesky characters and all that good stuff. So she's okay, but I just like her passive. Again, when she appears, when she appears, you guys already know. Polly is your budget Anna because I don't know when Anna is going to be on a banner or something but she is the only AoE healer if I'm not mistaken besides Anna so if you're running a tanky comp or a comp that needs to stay alive as we mentioned with some of the other characters at least in the R tier that need to stay alive the, the longer that they're alive the better or when they do revive if the timing is synced up pretty nicely they revive and then they get healed by the by her you know like pretty pretty good i like that so the effect of polly's heals on the ally leader is increased by a crazy amount so she's healing the leader more more better than she's going to do the partners and as you can see here she has a nice little thing it scales off her attack it's aoe but she also will restore the leader hp for three rounds after the fact so this can obviously be countered by Fenebeth, so you might want to be careful with that or just have a cleanse on deck. But and it, as we already know, it's going to be doing even more heals towards our leader. So that's pretty good. And then this one, she's actually an attacker. Like, I think I think Anna does not attack, but at least she attacks. She's like, yo, I'm about it. I'm out that fight. And then this is nothing. Let's go to the lens. Goddess of Revenge. Increase the hero rate by 15% while in battle. Awesome. Restores. Uh, oh, yeah. 
I'm reading everything wrong. It spells an additional debuff on the target. This is why I think, I was like, oh crap, I, I really wish I had Polly. You definitely want this lens effect here, because that's pretty, pretty major, I'll have to say. Like, uh, any debuff cleansing is really good, because sometimes the enemy will just start putting a bunch of nonsense on you, and you have nothing to take it off of, so. What is that? That's on the will of Wisp. Yeah, that's when she does her, uh, her special attack, but, you know, gotta hope it triggers and all that other nonsense. All right, flying uncharted territory. I never read Carol before. I read her once and I don't remember what she does. For three rounds after Carol appears, every attack increases target's attack by 65% last 10 seconds. Now, I don't know, I, oh, every, I guess all her attacks reduces her target's attack. So pretty good, it's, I, I mean, that's, you put her in front of someone you wanna do less damage, pretty good. I think that's nice if she can get to the, the enemy leader or if she can get to a, a sorcerer that's kind of sitting in the back somehow don't know how she'll do that but hey it is what it is oh we we so she's a stealer too I, I i remember something like that so she's a thief too she steals enhanced effects from the target i'm assuming maybe it's just old it, it means buffs but i don't know you guys would be able to tell me that and then you can see yeah that's basic let's look at the lens <laughs> look at the lens more damage increase attack when she comes into the fight and then steals one additional buff yeah it's just buffs so that is the the special. So she is a buff stealer as well. I like it. I like I like the buff stealing aspect of it because you can't have a game where you just buff everything to oblivion and then like there's nothing to counter it. So if you're having troubles with things being buffed out to hell, here we go. Oh yes, here we go. So when Alice dies, she's one of those other one death rattles. Uh, she increases the attack of one partner on the battlefield and one partner in the hand. Attack by 20% and their defense by 11%. So pretty good. I used to actually throw her out like pretty early, just be like, yeah, just buff something in my hand. But she, I forgot that she also does the battlefield too. So again, really cool ways to affect stuff. And I don't know, it's just really cool. It's just a really cool thing. Cause again, like you said, every time she dies, every time she dies, no matter how many times you bring her back, I like, obviously I only have 10 slots for my, my revive team. So I gotta be careful of how I wanna manipulate it. but. It's definitely gonna be some cool stuff. Anywho, time is reversed, uh, it's just regular things, and then this is regular. So what did the lens do? What, what you doing on the lens, girl? What you doing on the lens? More damage, which you don't care about. Attribute boost effects are doubled on uh, music, I don't know how to say it, music pula allies, which is awesome. So that's really cool if you use them in conjunction with each other, especially if you're using the Sakura Swordsman. That's gonna be really nice to have that in there. Increases basic attack and HP. And then here we go, the time glue. He's attacked by 30% for three rounds after using the skill, but gee, I don't care what your attack is, let's be honest. And last but not least, Nanali, or Nanali. So when she comes into the battle, she's decreasing the attack of the enemies for in the last 15 seconds. That's pretty good, obviously. It's directly immediate, and they get debuffed, so they'll have to cleanse that, you know, which I'm hoping maybe in her lens it does more. And this is just that, yeah, that row. She does row damage, and then she's not anything crazy. I do like that she comes in immediately and does that. Does she... Oh, you can have it reduce defense too. So she's like, she if you invest into it, she's like a little phobie. And then increases defense penetration. Yeah, okay, we're not looking for you to be all doing all that now, but I like that. She, she can increase their attack and defense, giving you a chance to possibly survive a little bit longer. I like that, I like that a lot. If we get 100 likes on this video, I will do the SR units. We'll go through every single one of them and we'll try to break it down gonna be a little bit of a nightmare because they're like i said a little bit more intricate than the r units some of the r units are basic but they're really really strong and don't even ask if i'll do all the ssrs because that would be a fucking nightmare because they're so much more intricate they do a lot of weird stuff and this is the chick uh hachi shiki i was trying to like who's this uh chick that you get for buying that pass there she goes anywho so i hope you guys enjoyed it's gonna be a night uh editing nightmare but hopefully you guys enjoy the video let me know what characters of the R units that you are really excited for that you still use to this day. Uh, was there ones that you were surprised that you never even bothered looking at and was like, wow, that's actually pretty good. Maybe I'll add that to my team. Or were you like, I'll never use these characters. I have an OP setup. I'll ne you'll never see an R unit see the light of day on my account. Let me know why in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And remember that every day at the Casino is your lucky day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.